Welcome back to the Hollow Sky Podcast. We are your hosts, Steven. And Kyle. And we are going to dive into part two of the throwaway aliens encounter, abduction encounter, Reddit encounter, however you want to call it. But first, we got to get through this business. Hell yeah. So, check us out at all our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. Come over and hang out with us. Leave us a like and a follow and all that good shit. Talk about weird stuff. Share weird stories, weird shit you come across on the internet just come and keep being the dope community that you are we appreciate you guys a lot forever if you have oh where do i go from here yeah if you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us that we can feature on a future episode kyle's gonna tell you how to do it you can call our cell phone or text our cell phone at 1618-556-0837 you can also record yourself with your smart device. You can write out your stories and shoot all that over to hollowskypodcast at gmail.com. You can leave some... I know our website has a thing where you can leave it on. Uh, social medias. Uh, we're once uh, schedules... I know I keep saying this, but... Uh, My schedule's been fucked. Steve's schedule. Work will never let me have a day off. <laughs> yeah. his, his schedule has been a little fucked. Because I was going to go... Live on, which would be last Friday for you guys. It would be yesterday for us. But I was going to go live on Instagram and remind everybody to, if you want to call in on Saturday with Candid Interview, you're more than welcome to. And then also we're throwing around the idea of maybe on Friday night scheduling a interview and doing one interview on a Friday night. So we'll see how that pans out, but... Just things that might be coming in the near future. So for all of you crazies that want to talk to us, you will soon have your opportunity. Hell yeah. If you're sitting there and wondering, how can I support this show that I enjoy so much? Well, we've got some ways. Our store just came up. We got a couple of shirt designs over there. You guys like them? Check them out. Buy them. Rep them. Let everybody see how dope the Hollow Sky podcast is. We're working on international shipping, hopefully. So do all our people outside of the United States. We're working on it. If we can't get it figured out, we will get it figured out eventually, we promise. And real quick, um, the Wendigo design, Mothman design, those were done by Paper Wasp Graphics. So if there's any other podcast out there listening and you want some dope artwork, hit that dude up. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And he also has an Etsy store where he sells some pretty cool shit, so check him out if you are interested. We also have a Patreon, so you can go over there and check that out. If there's any tiers you like, sign up for that. Get some stickers and some buttons and some magnets and some shirts or a Patreon-exclusive shirt and all that cool shit. Uh also tell all your friends share the podcast all, everywhere leave us likes leave us reviews you know how it is the more we get out there the better we have a venmo you can leave us some monster money or put toward the illuminati card game fund that might be a fun thing we do on a skype we can all play the illuminati, illuminati card game and see go. if we can read the future uh, also leave us a five-star rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts uh, i'll gladly shout any Five stars out that I come across because they're dope and I love reading them. Today's five star rating and review comes to us from Pritchard underscore art. No, Pritchett. P- yeah, Pritchett underscore art. Outstanding podcast. Five star. Definitely loving this podcast. Came from the confessionals. You guys rock. My type of podcast. Hooked. Well, Pritchett art, you rock. Thanks for taking the time to leave us a five star rating and review. You guys are all dope. Yeah, it's really it. It is really helping us out with all these five stars <laughs> know, and stuff. So like awesome. it's really pushing us forward, and we are infinitely grateful for everyone who takes the time to do that, and just everyone who talks about us, reps us. Of uh, dude, the dude, I forget your name, and I apologize. I'm fucking terrible with names, but dude went to Sam Tripley in Alaska. <laughs> oh, yeah wearing our shirt and met Tripoli and then also shouted us out to everyone at the show. Like that is, that is putting the That's fuck on. Dope. It is awesome. It is pretty dope. To like see. Steve sent that to me and I'm like, what, 
That is that is out of this world. This that is, is so fucking cool. Sam Tripoli right next to a Hollis Guy shirt. It is awesome. We have the best listeners on the planet. Without question. I'll, I will f- die on that hill every single day of my life. Oh, yeah, for sure. And every, Like the 99%, they, they just straight rep us to death. They do. They love us. And the 1% hate us because we say the F word. That's true. So, sorry. That's true. And for that, I am not sorry. <laughs> Neither uh, am I. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's We're me grown and adults. Steve. If yeah. you can't handle the F word, you should it's, probably. It's just, literally a noise that I make with my mouth. Probably just watch cartoons or something. And we like only talk like this because we're ultra comfortable with each other. Like when we were on the confessionals, we respected Tony and his his platform. So there's that. Yeah. But aside from that, so deal with it. We're we're legends. So. <laughs> I don't, I don't anyway, know, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> getting back on. Let's go. I'm excited. We're gonna go for to our. Story. We're gonna go to our listener submission of the day. This comes from our website, which you guys can go to that and leave your submissions there. You can also leave ratings and reviews there. We get notifications in our email, and I try to find them and put them in folders. But I'm not good at stuff. So today's listener submission is submitted from our friend Anthony. It says personal encounter. I'm a truck driver, and I had a stint of covering an overnight run for a few months at the beginning of the year. I seen a few unusual things along the way, like car fires, people getting CPR on the side of the road, and roadkill, which looks like the animal actually exploded. You know, reasonably normal things on the road. (laughs) However, there were three instances in which I cannot explain. The first happened at a truck stop while I was fueling my truck. As I'm standing next to my trunk, truck pumping fuel, I see a person out of the corner of my eye, walking from the direction where the trucks are parked, uh, for the evening towards the store. I look at this person person wearing a zip-up gray sweatshirt, t-shirt, jeans, and a hat carrying a bag over their shoulder, presumably to take a shower. It's a truck stop. I look and I realize this person does not have a face. I see glasses, but no eyes, no mouth, no nose. I snap my head away and continue my business. Minding your own business is an art in the middle of the night. The second and third business or the second and third instance happened a few days later. But on this, or a few days later, but on the same night. Hmm. Oh, I got you. The second and third instances happened a few days later, but they both happened on the same night. Right. Confused me there. My shift started at 6 p.m., so I was staying, it was staying light later in the evening, and for the few, first few hours of driving were in the daylight. As I'm driving along, I noticed just ahead of me was a brown mist or wisp of transparent something crossing the highway from left to right. It most certainly was not a cloud of wind blown dirt. It was not a windy it was not windy that day and I've seen that many times so know what it looks like. This wisp crossed the highway then disappeared from the shoulder of the road. The third incident happened a few hours later and it was dark. I pulled off an exit because I had to relieve the call of nature and I was in an area which had no truck stops. It was a suburban area. I pulled off to the shoulder of the exit, hopped out of my truck and walked to the passenger side and took care of business. While standing there, I get an overwhelming urge to run to the back or to run back to my truck, get in and lock the door. I resist the urge because obviously I'm obviously I'm busy. I then think to look over my shoulder. But as soon as that thought occurs, a voice booms in my head. Don't. Now I'm frightened. I finish my business. Keep my eyes down as I hurry back to my truck, climb in and lock the door. I feel better being inside, but I still want to get away. I grab a bottle of water from my cooler and sit a few seconds because I'm a big bad trucker who's afraid of nothing now that I'm behind a locked door. (laughs) Then I got the hell out of there. Nothing happened to me because of the experiences, but I simply cannot explain what I saw or how I felt. I chalk it up to things that just happened on the road. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for your submission. Um, my dad was a truck driver and he has some weird stories. I'm sure that I've shared some of them here. He's got kind of like a flannel man encounter and stuff. And I wish more truck drivers would contact us because I feel like these people see some shit. Oh, I guarantee it. And this is proof of that. The first one is <clears throat> fucked up. I've, I've heard... Other stories of no face beings, but I don't know if they're legit paranormal encounters, which I mean, clearly they are because he just had one, or if the ones that I read were like oh, urban yeah. legend creepy pasta gotcha. kind of things. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It would, 
And I, I love the fact that he's just like, <laughs> yep, going to look away and mind my own business. Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I thought, too. The overwhelming feel, like feeling of dread I've had before. I'm not a truck driver, and I wasn't like that. But even I tell the same story. I was going out. It was late at night. I forgot to shut my uh, shed garage door. It was like 2 in the morning. I'm walking out there. It's dark as hell. And I go to pull the garage door shut, and I just get this overwhelming sense of dread. Like, you need to get the fuck out of here right now. I don't know what caused it. I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. It was just a feeling that I had that j- just washed over me, like get yeah. inside and lock the door. Well, it's like sometimes you're in your house and say you're going back to your bedroom and you're shutting all the lights off on your way back and you have that long hallway light and you click it and you're like, let's go. Oh, I totally, I mean, I do understand the feeling I've had it before, like outside, you know, of a night I'll go outside and have a cigarette and, then you, you do like I'll I'll go outside to face nature so to speak and you you do have that feeling once in a while like Just something like, is oh, right shit. behind you now ninety percent of the time I do turn to look I, don't, I but I don't have a voice in my head that goes no yeah I've, I overlooked that part that's that's wild as well yeah like it's whether it was your inner self you know just that. That re- that just the consciousness, some sort of defense mechanism, right. like you do not want to know, <laughs> right? What's on the other side? Of just, you. just go back in, do what you do best, and mind your own business. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that was dope. Thanks, yeah. Anthony, for sending that in. Um, any other truck drivers out there that want to share their story, we are here for it for sure. Send it to us. Now we're gonna jump into part two of this throwaway aliens reddit abduction encounter if you haven't listened to part one make sure you go back and listen to it i'll recap a little bit uh, a reddit post was posted i ask reddit wanting to hear stories of people that have been abducted or seen ufos this uh, anonymous account throwaway aliens came in sharing his uh, history of abductions and the aliens he's interacting with where we left off they basically just explained to him that of the millions of life forms in the galaxy, humans are one of three that could possibly be the creators of the galaxy. So you definitely want to catch up on that. Yeah, that's a bombshell in itself. Yeah, so they want to figure out which of these species have created it so they can better understand the intelligence that creates this world. He goes on to state that that sounds a lot like religion to me. I tried to finish up college for a few years or a few years ago and I took world religions course and to me this sounded like religion. I'm not an expert so I don't know. Also I didn't end up finishing college. I only have like 3 courses left, but I'm not ever going to get there and that bothers me a lot because a lot of people in my family were really educated and were doctors and engineers and I'm just nothing special. That's mostly because of this thing that I've had to deal with as part of my life. When I look back on all the videos they've shown me and all the questions they've asked, it's pretty clear that this is what they're studying in me. I should have seen that even before Gina told me, but it's hard to clearly think about things like this because it's traumatic. I've read some of the comments you've all made about me in the last few months, and I've seen a few of you mention mental health stuff, like maybe I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not delusional or insane, but over the years I've had to deal with this shit in my life and it's not easy. Maybe that's caused me to see things a little differently than they are to you. I don't mean like I'm imagining things, but that I may be justifying things or rationalizing them. You have to understand that I don't have control of my own life. If you can understand that, I'm not in control of it. Someone else is, and they've done stuff to me, like taking me away and forcing me to watch things, and interrogating me, and all of it, and I don't have a choice. I do not have a choice in it. And I think maybe when I was commenting here before, maybe I was putting kind of a rose-colored glasses on my experience because the reality of it is that my life doesn't mean anything to anyone, and I am powerless. And it's easier for me to think of Jack and Gina as friendly, and as the things they do with me as just not so bad. I don't know what my point is here, except that you shouldn't trust most abduction stories. I wouldn't trust most of the alien stuff that you hear either because people out there want attention and they're bored. They want to take advantage of you and make you do things and they make up stuff to get your attention. If you've been through it in reality, it's easy to spot people making stuff up about it. 
I say this because I saw in one of your comments, there's a guy posting that he's an alien named Adam and, and is going to show everyone the true history of the planet through the internet starting this summer. And he made his account right after I posted my comments and then started posting recently. At one point, he even said that I was part of his scam somehow. That person is full of BS. That's not a real thing. And if you believe it, then I've got a bridge to sell you. And I mention it also because you're probably going to hear a lot more accounts of abductions in the next few years because I've seen many more of us up there than I used to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Things have changed about the way they are, they are observing us. And there's a lot more human contact, and a lot of those people are bound to mention it to friends or family. And then once that gets out, the hoaxers and frauds are bound to start popping up. This stuff is really important, though, and not just for you or for Earth, but for the people who they are taking. We are people, and this is not easy for most of us. It's hard, and it's lonely, and we don't have anywhere we can get help. My friend Sam that I mentioned died before, that I mentioned died before in 2016, and I got a chance to meet his mother at the funeral, and I think that helped her deal with the loss a little. He was a nice guy. He was the nicest guy I ever knew, honestly. He was only eight years older than me, but he died of bone cancer, and I wonder if it had to do with, I guess, radiation or something, or just something about our experiences up there. I don't know. Or, or I don't know, or I don't know, we are all getting older. Maybe it's just, it was just his destiny to die like that, but I don't think so. And I don't believe in destiny anyway. He was such a nice guy to me and his mother was heartbroken and there were almost, there was almost no one at his funeral. Of course, it's not his real name. As I said last time, I changed everyone's name because I'm not about to out anyone on here. And I happened to be thinking about the show Cheers at the time. That's why I picked these names. So he talks about all these other people that are going up there. And this one in this one specifically, the Sam died of what they said was bone cancer in 2016. But he seems to think that it was caused by whatever they were doing up there. Or it could have been the experiments. It could have yeah. been one of the people where he said they don't survive. Yeah. You know, and they, they just they write it off it. as cancer. Yeah. Very well could have been. And him, the way he started this, like, this sounds like a person in utter desperation. Yeah, for sure. Like, that has just lost all hope. Yeah. Like, he's dealing with this abduction stuff, and nobody's listening to it. Yeah, nobody He cares. went to Reddit to try to share his story, and all he got was people trolling him, people questioning his mental health, people trying to discredit his story. People Welcome to the internet. Yeah. It's you almost like you feel sympathy for him. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's sad to hear the direction that it's gone for him. And then a couple of his friends, it doesn't sound like his friends are doing very good either. No. And I want to apologize because the way he's he's writing these, he's referring to comments that I didn't come across. Like he posted answers to questions and stuff. So if he refers to things like it's already been covered and you feel like you missed it. It's because I couldn't find it after he deleted his account. A bunch of stuff was lost and I didn't want to go to the Wayback machine and try to search and track it all down because that's the kind of research I do. So, well, that and we don't have a whole lot of time <laughs> in our researches. So yeah, he says, I begged coach to come with me to the funeral because it was the right thing to do. And because I'd never traveled that far on my own, but he wouldn't. And we haven't spoken for years. He pretends like none of this is real and that it never happens. I know that they're still taking him up and I've tried to reach out to him, but he stopped returning my calls. He is really famous now, not just sort of famous, but very, very famous. And I know he's afraid of what this could do to his career, but it's not like I would ever name him. So I don't know why he cut me out of his life. This thing that we are all going through is different for each of us, and some of us handle it differently, I guess. But to me, it felt different than that when he wouldn't go to Sam's funeral. It was like he had ins like, it was like I had insulted his mother or something. Like, how dare I ask him to go to the funeral of some trashy nobody when really he just had a couple lucky breaks, and that's the only difference between him and Sam. Or even between him and I. I'm not bitter about his success, but I am so furious with him about the way he changed and treated me when Sam died and didn't even acknowledge Sam or go to his funeral. I know that he will never admit to any of this, but I also know that Coach was in the same group as me and that eventually they were going to take him back with them. I bet he thinks he's safe from that now because he's seen everywhere and they wouldn't dare take up a celebrity because then everyone would know, but they don't care about that. 
So live it up now, buddy, because sooner or later you're going to vanish and your truth will come out. Well, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Dude, that is insane. And I was looking, trying to figure out <clears throat> if there was any ties in to this coach person. And there are some threads that somehow linked it to Dr. Dre. I don't know how, but they said here recently there were reports of him missing. There were reports of him going social media silent. And a lot of people attribute it to maybe this July 18th thing that came about and him either trying to avoid it or him being taken in a spaceship. I don't know. I don't follow Dr. Dre on any social media. Right. Maybe he's back chilling. But apparently it's someone who is super famous. He didn't even necessarily say it was a, a movie star or something, just a celebrity. That could be a sports celebrity, Anything. a rock star, you know, any of that shit. I wonder if his nickname has anything to do <sighs> with Coach. Yeah, like I wonder if that nickname pertains to anything that he does or if, it, or if it's just a straight up curveball. Yeah, I think it was just because he said he was listening to Cheers. That's why he had a Diane and a Coach. Right. And, but it could be. It could be like a little nugget of truth there right. for us to yeah. look down. I would be interested. It's going to be interesting to see if any of these celebrities disappear. <laughs> that would be bizarre. He goes on to say, I met three other people who went up regularly over the last eight to ten years and made friends with them. I didn't mention any of them last time I commented here because one I had just met and I wasn't sure if we were really going to be friends and the other two I hadn't met at that point. They are all dead now. Two of them committed suicide, and the other one died in a car accident that I'm pretty sure was also a suicide. So maybe you get it now when I say that once you've been through this, you can tell when people are lying. They don't set you back, they don't set you back down here with a message of world peace or a warning to stop wars. They don't care about us. Not like that, they don't. They don't select some old man on a hillbilly vacation to give him a message about how to save the whales or to fight Satan. The fact of it is. <clears throat> that it takes a hell of a lot of patience for me to get to the point to where I ask them questions with, about anything. This thing has been a part of my terrible life since I was a kid, and it's too much to deal with, to be honest. I haven't ever been able to hold down a real job. I haven't been able to make real friends or have real relationship that's meant anything, except I was very close to Diane and her family, but she's gone now too. My dad died in 2010 and left me our house and a little bit of money. My mom died a long time ago, but that's a whole nother story. If it weren't for the house and the money he left me, I would have ended up on the street, and then you all here would have never heard me, <clears throat> heard of me, or anyone I talked to would have thought I was cra a crazy homeless man. And that's how most of us probably end up, is either living on the streets or else driving our cars off cliffs and taking enough pills not to wake up. I don't know why I've been able to handle it and others can't. I don't know how Coach can handle it and others can't. I don't know what makes us any different or what makes us similar. And maybe we can't handle it better anyway. And maybe the better way is to just go out on our own terms or to lose your mind and get locked up. I don't know really. But I know that when you scroll through the comments on here, no one seems interested in what day-to-day -day life is like for someone like us whose lives are taken over by this. I don't know anything is the fact of it all at the end of the day. The only thing I know for sure is that when someone says they have answers – or the aliens told them things, or that they are an alien, or anything for sure about aliens or conspiracies or anything like that, you can be pretty sure that that person is full of BS and is trying to pull one over on you. That's the truth, and maybe the only full truth that I know. Because if this happens to you, if this really happens to you, then you don't get answers. You don't get to understand. You don't come forward and pretend to have the answers. When this happens to you, you spend all your days feeling like garbage <clears throat> and try to hide. I've had I don't know how many jobs over the years, all at around a minimum wage, making sandwiches, delivering pizzas, filling shipping boxes, janitorial work, but I can't hold a job because of this. I couldn't finish college because of this. I barely finished high school, and if you want to, if you want to know the fact of it, I hardly leave my house or go out in public, not because I think people will think I'm crazy, not even because I'm afraid of people, but because I'm so tired all the time. I know that I have trauma, and I know that maybe the way I see things is shaped by that and all of it. I know I know that, but it doesn't change the fact that this is my day-to-day -day reality. I miss my dad, and I miss Diane. I even miss Coach. And I hardly get through a day without thinking about Sam because I have no one else in my life. All the time I'm lonely, and it hurts to be this alone. 
So no, I don't know how their machines work or how they travel here or where I'll be going with them or any of that. I don't know any of that. And that makes me feel even worse because I have no, just no control and no understanding about it. And even if I asked them or if they could tell me, how could I know? And how could I explain it to anyone if anyone would even listen anyway? I don't even know how cell phones work. How does an air conditioner work? How do they get air into the machine that puts air into your car tires? I, or car tires? I don't know any of this stuff. How long have they been here? I don't know, but I don't even know how long we've been here. Do they have weaknesses? I don't know. If they did, do you think they would tell me? Can they feel love? I don't know. Or I don't know that for sure, because how could I know that? Why did they choose July 18th? I don't know the answer to that. I don't have the, any answers to these things, and I'm sick of having the questions asked. I don't care that I'm not coming back because I don't have anything here. I'm so tired of the loneliness and the sadness of this place. So what? I'm not afraid of them or of the government either because there's nothing they can do. Every moment of my life is the worst moment of my life. I tell you, <clears throat> I'll tell you what is frustrating is to see so many comments on here and not just on here, but everywhere about conspiracy this and conspiracy that. And you can see in their faces or in their words that they want to be a part of it and that they want this experience, but you do not want this experience. It's frustrating to see people who think they have it f figured something out because they stayed up late on a Wednesday night reading something on the web and now they think they understand or they've figured something out. You're out of your mind if you think you can figure it all out. I'm not the crazy one. You won't get your answers from the government cover-up report that's about to come out. That will say, oh, sure, there's some unexplained stuff, but we don't know about any aliens. Well, that's fucking weird. Spot the fuck on. Exactly what that's the disclosure paper much, said. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Because this, this came out before the disclosure papers did. This came out, I think, in April or May. Was when this comment was yeah, he made. He fucking nailed that one out of the park. They, it was almost verbatim. Yeah, yeah. this stuff's so unexplained, but we don't know about aliens. He sounds so <clears throat> offended and hurt. Like he, he's like a mad. Like right now, I picture him crying, but he's mad. Yeah, he's mad like, crying. You do. You feel. You feel for him yeah. at this point. Like if, even if it's not what he's experiencing, it is clearly wreck this man's life or, yeah. or a woman i don't i don't even know i don't know if it's if it's a he uh, him or her well a note to self don't read internet comments <laughs> yeah he goes on to say i hate to break it to everyone but they already made contact they're here they've been here and they are now in contact with humans i've seen many 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 more of us up here on my last several trips and they weren't like me not like coach or sam these aren't abductees or whatever it is that we are. When you see an, ab an abductee up here, uh, we usually look either like they're leading us down the hallway in a dentist's office or else we're throwing our arms up around and screaming because we're so scared. But the people up here now are different. But now there are people up here who look like businessmen and military men. They're sitting up there on their own without being guarded. They're having meetings and they are watching something on screens and talking back like prob like they're talk probably talking with people on earth. They're wearing army uniforms and military jackets. I've heard these people up there speaking English and in languages I don't understand. I mean that I know some of them were Chinese and some of them were Japanese or Korean and there was some that were French because I do recognize French. I've seen people who look Arab and African and everything you can imagine. They are in contact with us. I know that the U.S. government is in contact with them because I've seen American military up there and also because when the U.S. government men kidnapped me, they asked me questions that they couldn't have just made up. They have information about the ships and about what they have done to me on those ships and about me. The only way they could have gotten all that information was if they were talking with the friends of friends or whatever you want to call them. And that was years ago. So I know the government at least knew about them years ago. You wonder what you'll learn from the report? Whatever was planned for July is still going to happen so far as I know. But it has definitely changed. Something changed and I'm pretty sure that's why this report is coming out. But I can't be sure about that. I've heard the friends talking about a report for years and years, but I didn't know it would happen this way. I don't know if the report that's coming out is to prepare us or is it or it's just a, co a cover up. I don't know 
what it all will be on the 18th either, except that Gina too and the Friends of Friends are leaving and someone else is coming and that whatever will happen to Earth is not colonization. I've seen maps up there and it looks like on the 18th something will happen at least in Western Africa, something maybe in China or around China, and in Wyoming or Colorado or Utah. It's hard for me to know where stuff is just looking at the maps without state and country borders on them, but none of the maps up there <clears throat> have any lines, so I'm making an educated guesses about those three spots. I don't know for sure what the government report will be, but I think that the point of it is misdirection. There's a big change in the program coming, and the friends are leaving. That's one of the reasons I'm going to, I think. And something about that change, I think, might really be noticeable or destructive or something. There won't be answers in any report, just misdirections. That's my bet. This took me a lot longer than I thought it would, and it's too late to answer questions, but I don't know if I would want to. I can't tell you exactly what will happen on the 18th, and I don't care anyway. Whatever it is, I just don't care if it's destructive, or even if the people coming to replace the friends of friends are terrible and they colonize. I just don't have the ability to care anymore, because I'm just tired, and I've had to accept my destiny. The only way I make it through my nights right now is telling myself that in a few weeks' time, I'll get to see Diane and make sure that she's okay. I'm probably being stupid because they're probably going to do something bad to me, but it really can't be worse than this, and I have no choice but to believe that this will all work out for me. I can't make it through the night without believing that. And believe me, I know how pathetic it sounds when I say that all I have to look forward to is seeing a girl who's practically, practically like a niece or a distant cousin who might not even remember me for all I know. She's been gone for a long time, and I know there are others of us that they have taken, so I hope she's met some friends and is happy wherever she is, and I guess wherever it is that I'm going. Maybe there'll be enough of us there that I can make some friends too. He posted again on 5-24-2021 at 5.25 p.m. It says 7-18, goodbye. And then he posted again <clears throat> seven minutes later rep replying to comment in r slash UFOs. It says, many of you have sent me very nice messages, and I thank you all. I appreciate that there are some nice people out there. For the most part, people are commenting here are very mean, and not just to me, but also to people who actually have mental illness. I'm sorry that you're all so angry. I'm not ill. I'm not depressed. I am sad, and I am lonely, and I'm spending the next two days eating the food I like, drinking tea and coffee and beer, and making the most of it. You're all being lied to and manipulated by hoaxers and people who want attention and money and to control you somehow. I don't want any part of that. I've sent proof of my story to two people I grew up with, including screenshots of this account. They are old email addresses, so I don't even know if they check those emails or not. But if they do, they'll be the only two people who can verify my information. I will never come back to Reddit or anywhere else. If anyone posts, posts claiming to be me or to know me or to be in contact with me, they are lying to you. Many of you will know the truth on the 18th. I hope you all are safe. At three days later, 5.30 a.m., Throwaway Aliens account is deleted. That's a heavy, heavy ending there. That's That last, like he the last half, he's so just distraught. Yeah, he's over it. He's over it. Like it... Like and he, he's you, over you it in almost the worst way. Can't imagine the trauma that comes with whatever he's experienced. No. Be it alien abduction, be it some sort of life trauma that he is projecting as an alien abduction. Like I don't even know if it is. I think the dude's legit. If it like, because I almost started thinking about like maybe, dude. I don't even know. Maybe his parents were abusive and he kind of tried to like put Jack and Gina in their place, you know? Could I'm be. not a I'm not a psychiatrist. It could or be, but he got some details right that it and and how his story changes so much. His post from 2013, the biggest thing he was afraid of was somebody seeing the videos of when he was first taken yeah. of how he was reacting. Right. Now he's like, I don't even give a fuck if I wake up in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's some cynical like beat me down. Like he is He's so fucking defeated. over. He's just defeated. Yeah, yeah. and he's, he, or, he doesn't care if he dies. Keep referring to him as he. I know. Well, I'm just doing that as is. But like, you, he, this is. These are words from someone that that doesn't have anything left. No, no, no. They he even goes on to like. 
I don't I don't give a shit what happens to the planet. I don't fucking no. care. If they I am hundred percent over my life. He just wants to go where these other people he met went. Yeah, and he doesn't even know if it's going to be a good ending for him. No, he doesn't even know if she, if Diane's still alive. Right. He said he, he's like fully prepared that if I get on this ship, they're probably going to kill me. But it's, it's better. Got to be better than being on Earth. Right. It that just sucks. that's that is some soul sucking. Yeah, that sucks. Down, <laughs> terrible that shit. Sucks. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want. And he's pro- <laughs> he's right. He's right. There are a lot of people out there that you'll hear them. And I wish I had this experience i wish i had that i wish i could go through this and he's he is probably dead the fuck on when he says no you don't no you don't you don't no, have you any don't. fucking idea no. and there's people that we've talked to that have had things happen to them and they wish that they would never would have happened to them yeah ever that, i think a lot a lot of especially abductees that's why they don't even talk about it yeah the shit that goes on is so bad that's why they don't even fucking remember. Our yeah. brains are like, block that trauma out because you're not going to be able to fucking handle and that, it. And that's assuming that whatever took them didn't do it. But yeah, that's a good point is that it could have been so bad that your brain just put up yeah. a, a wall it's for just, you not you, to remember. You can't, you, you can't handle it. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. So I don't even know where to go from here. As we know, July 8th and 18th have passed. As we're releasing this, it's the 24th. This is going to drop in two days. So. Well, the first half will drop in two days. The other half will yeah, drop in two weeks. Yeah, this one will drop two weeks from now. The first half will drop in yeah. two days. As we know, as of right now, the 24th, there is no alien disclosure that we know of. There is no proof of aliens that I know of. Pretty much nothing has changed from the 18th till now, right? Yeah. But I did find some weird shit that went down on the 18th. I'm not saying it's, it solidifies his account. I'm not saying it's proof. I'm not saying if it's even fucking related. But on the 18th, a whole slew of new sighting videos came out on YouTube. There was one showing a woman on a passenger jet. They're out over the ocean. She's recording a big ass thunderstorm and all of a sudden in the midst of this thunderstorm these balls of light start popping up and they're they're not it's not ball lightning because they're fully illuminated even when there's no lightning at all but the thing when it when lightning does strike you can see that the lights aren't coming from the ground up because there is no fucking ground she's right. over the ocean right and it start they start to change form and move around and it is bizarre that was posted the 18th there is another one from philadelphia showing these weird they call them hot dog shaped but they're kind of tic tac crafts moving all over the night sky also from the 18th reports came out from new york and new jersey Sonic booms, unexplained humming vibrations <laughs> coming on of the course. 18th. <clears throat> of course. This is where she gets a little bizarre. There's a website called livemeteors.com. It basically monitors objects that enter the Earth's atmosphere. It's usually super quiet. Except. On the 18th. The minute before midnight on the 18th something unexplainable happens. Now, I showed you this video before, Kyle, and I'll post it on the socials. You know what this fucking reminds me of? This video right here, the stream. You remember that scene out of Independence Day? That When they're monitoring it and then it just goes crazy? Yeah, I'll, I'm just going to walk you through this, but livemeteors.com, is, it's almost like a sound wave kind of thing, and it's monitoring it, and it's keeping just this steady pace. Yeah. At like a 729 or whatever it is on this on this reading. And as soon as fucking July 18th hits, wherever it is, this thing rips wide open. And there is this huge, huge mass of something entering the atmosphere. They don't know if it's a meteor. They don't know it's if massive. it's a rocket. But it is huge and it is not regular. No. Not regular. It also goes on people who monitor it throughout the rest of the day 
said that this was a constant event through the 18th. These would come in waves. That's terrifying. I looked up on it and they did, someone did some research and they said this massive signals is caused by a V, what they call a VHF, a very high frequency transmission from an earth-based broadcaster. They believe somewhere in Canada hitting it, it essentially was something hitting in the atmosphere and getting bounced back down to earth over a very large distance, a greater distance than would normally be possible. The something would have to hit an ionized gas in our atmosphere and that would send this massive wave down. Right. So essentially the object probably isn't that big, but it hits that gas, the gas shoots down and these radio towers will pick it up. <clears throat> um, it says when a meteor enters the Earth's upper atmosphere, it excites the air molecules, producing a streak of light and leaving a trail of ionization uh, behind it, usually tens of kilometers long. They said the ionized trail may last for one second up to several minutes. Uh, the meteor detector at Live Meteors is located in Washington, D.C. The area is uh, currently pointing at the Yaga Antenna TV Tower in Canada. Sometimes big signals like these in this Reddit post are detected over a long period of time. These events are specifically called sporadic E's. They seem to happen very frequently, but there's no analysis on how frequently these do occur. So at less than a minute to midnight UTC time on the 17th to the 18th of July, one of these big sporadic E events happened. And a lot of people from the Reddit alien or the throwaway alien subreddit happened to see it, which seems to, fall right in line with him saying S something weird is going to happen yeah, on the he, 18th. He said there's a change. And something huge is seen entering the Earth's atmosphere at the exact moment. That's fucking crazy. So is it just a coincidence that this unexplained atmospheric phenomenon happens at the exact day, the exact time, well, not the exact time, but the exact day that this guy predicted it right. from it eight years before it literally it starts like almost literally almost the minute of the 18th <laughs> and almost then it, and like, then it continues without the day another but it, it but it continues in waves which is even more terrifying it's yeah it's like it's like he told you we were coming yeah. we are here yeah <laughs> exactly something else i read i cannot Prove this, find a source of this. If somebody wants to dive into this, you know, Kenneth, Kyle, yeah, I'm here's sure one, those guys here's are one for you dogs. This. Look around July 18th because it, it was reported that at the exact time that this atmospheric anomaly started to happen, when it shows something entering the Earth's atmosphere, the live feed from our U.S., from the International, U.S. Space Station, <laughs> the International Space Station cut out sending signals to Earth. I think They're I read that feed. somewhere else too, though. How fucking where. convenient is that? Yeah, yeah. And the last time they did it is because they started seeing shit on the cameras and they cut the feed. Like, like what you said, <laughs> how many coincidences do you need to have before they're not fucking coincidences anymore? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, where do we even go with this dog? Like, I don't even. No. I don't know. Uh, the dude has completely wiped themselves from Reddit. They yeah, deleted he, their account on the twenty on May 27th. And he said he's never coming back. And he'll never be back on Reddit. He said he'll never be back anywhere. Yeah. He said anyone claiming to be me, liar. Yep. So this yeah, dude he, is even fully if, prepared to just dis a fucking peer. And he's he, prepared to die. He's prepared to get eaten by aliens. He's prepared to do... Whatever the fuck they want him to do, as long as he's away from it. Yeah, and he completely prefaced it to where even if he chose to come back... Don't believe me. Nobody will ever believe it. Nobody will. I don't he, know. He won't be able to prove shit unless he actually has like hard, hard proof. Yeah. Undeniable proof. Which two people out there... Supposedly... Do. ...have yeah. the, the legit hard I mean, why, proof. Yeah, unless he was lying through the whole thing, why would he start lying now? But he also... Anybody he, who's got old email addresses, you better start checking them because... I was going to say, he even set that up to where they might not even know it's there. It, yeah. it may have gotten white, like washed 
from the internet already because I I would imagine after so long of these emails of these email accounts being inactive, they just eventually delete them. Shut down, probably. Yeah. I don't know, dude. But that was this had started popping up on social media as a like I said a, a last month ish, last week. It really got fired up because the 18th was coming. It got hot around the 8th when nothing happened. People kept rolling with it. He There's a lot more information out there talking about the comments and the questions he answered. He talks about um, the two different types of abductions. Like when he first talked about in his opening comment how you go willingly. Yeah. He said people that recount abductions that are... Um, more violent and maybe I'm getting this confused with another story. Maybe not. But he says like the government is also responsible for abductions. Right. Which we're hearing a lot of looking into Max Spears and oh, yeah. Super my, Soldiers. My <clears throat> next the next episode that I have, it'll run a couple episodes, but yes, uh which it started at looking into super soldiers, but it evolved and yeah, it, it is. It's said in my research that there uh, there are a lot of unwilling abductions from specific a very specific alphabet agency. Uh, but another thing that I kind of mentioned earlier about when you drop that bomb, like I had this wild thought, like, wh- what if what if Egress was hunting specific people? To get ready for this change. I thought of that too when we were walking outside when you were going to smoke. Because the flyers were pretty specific to what the yeah. aliens were looking for. Yeah. I even I even made, even in my next research, I and find ties to Egress. And I even put it in D- our Discord. I'm like, why do all roads lead to Egress? Like everything has that little bit of a spark. That dude, I don't even know. Bro. And after after reading what I read for my next one, I am I'm convinced that we're marked and they're gonna die. I wouldn't go that far, but I I I'm convinced that egress is something. It's not just nothing. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think it is. And I don't know, with this if you think about it, like look at when we you and me vaguely researched agenda 20 31 or whatever yeah, it was yeah, and yeah. they had all this terrestrial talk uh there's a, there's even been people out there theorizing that uh this whole covid thing the vaccine is actually for a race coming to earth what at this like, point he, i don't even i, I don't, don't even know what's real no, no, it it is getting and the, you the see lines what are happens, very blurry. You see what happens to people when they can't figure out what's real. Yeah, like I, either either this this story is a is a downward mental health spiral of someone that needed so much help and everyone in their life failed them or this is a story of how these abductions affect people. I think it's legit. I feel like it's the way it's worded, the way it's presented. And then the fact, the fact that they came back seven fucking years later, just out of the, blue. in the, in the exact same year, that he said it was going to happen. That's some that's some prime time fucking preparation right Well, there. I if it on to be 100% honest, what are the odds you would have even fucking remembered talking you? shit talking shit on Reddit one day? Yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. I, I will you... bet you money I would have forgot about it. What about your money? Yep. And there's no way that I would have logged back into the exact same account went back to the same shit and continued on with, you know, my BS story. Yep. I guarantee I wouldn't have done it. But this guy did. So like you said. It's almost like the guilt aided him so much 
that when he first posted that, you know, they're not bad. They're pretty cool. I'm, yep. I like talking with these people, blah, blah, blah. And then come later, he's like, I was fucking wrong. And then on top of that, he's saying that the friends are out, that something else is coming. And he's like, I don't give a shit if they're bad or not. Yeah. They're, and look, they're coming. And look at what he found out about the friends. They came in and wiped shit. The, they wiped everything out. Yeah. And then the fact that at the end here, they were working with the United States government. If they haven't, well, they always have because even which is exactly what that that Israeli, I think it was from Israel, that Israeli Defense Department general said he's like, yeah, governments have been working with them forever. Well, and then look at the, I think it was what was it, the Eisenhower deal that everybody low key will talk about Mm -hmm. how he apparently made a pact with uh, aliens, and then you have like in Dulce we talked about it how the government was working with them, (laughs) like. It's not that far fetched of no. a story, especially especially if the government thought for two seconds that there was something in it for them. Yeah, they're gonna do it. And on the, on the other side of the coin, there, uh, would the government even have a fucking choice? Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> if the aliens are like, "No, you're going to work with us," the government can't just exactly go, "No, or not." But it's almost like it's almost like they have a specific respect for us because they think we may be it's a valid point. their creators. It's a valid you know? point. What if the ones before the friends figured out that we're not, and they were just gonna wipe wipe the floor with us? And the friends are like, "Whoa, hey, we need to do our research. Whoa, it's our turn. Easy. Something happened for sure. It's." And it's, it's, so it's weird that they're like, that they're changing seats too. They're like everybody's taking a turn investigating. Yeah, us. it's so cre- crazy watching him just or listening to the spiral. You know of him, like I said, the the thing that he was worried about the most in the first post was them sharing the video right. of him being taken up and him looking looking dumb, dumb. Yeah, and now he's just like. If they eat me, I don't care. If they kill me, I don't care. That dude had to have gone through some heavy, heavy shit. Because you're, you know, I'm assuming that his family didn't believe him if he came forward. His friends didn't believe him if they came forward. The fucking government sure as fuck wasn't going to help him. Because no, they, they just made it him. worse. Yeah. He comes here anonymously to Reddit to try to find people to believe him and to help him. And they shit on him. The only people he could confide in were the other people that were abducted. Well, motherfuckers should have came to Hollow Sky. We would have helped the whole thing. We're here, out. dog. We're here you to dr- listen. You, you dropped the ball, bro. If you're listening to us from outer space, you dropped the he ball. He tried. He tried. He just went the wrong direction. Yeah, you should have reached Never out to us. Never go to Reddit. Too many trolls on Reddit. You should have reached out to Reddit. us because we would have blew your shit wide open. But yeah, that's that's the little Reddit mystery that it was good. Was eight years in the making. Yeah, and that's that's a long time to be dedicated. That is, man. And I and just... the fucked up thing is that the when he comes back, he doesn't even really add to the story. But I mean, it's just like him coming back and being like, "I fucked up." Yeah, life sucks. Uh, there's big changes coming, and I will never be back again. So he's just he's just done with it. Yeah. It's like. You all want some closure? He's like, here's the closure I'm going to give you. Shit's coming the 18th. Good luck. Yeah, I'm out. I already know I'm getting taken. So it it leads me to this final thought. Like, did something happen the 18th? Uh, Did the change happen and it was covered up? Did the change happen and we weren't able to perceive it? Because he talks like the friends are always right there but too far for us to understand. Well, let's look back at Stardust. They In Stardust, that girl reports that uh, UFOs can manipulate their surroundings like how the ones were looking like clouds. Um, you could only imagine that if the civilization itself is as advanced enough to travel across the side or whatever the fuck they want to call it, Who's to say that whatever entered that atmosphere was cloaked by something 
but the if it's cloaked, it doesn't mean that it's invisible across all spectrums. So these radio waves are hitting something, but just because we can't see it doesn't mean that it's not there. Yeah, and and what better way to disguise, disguise yourself as coming in as a phenomenon that's relatively regular, but then the fact that these waves just kept coming. That's what makes it fucked. Because like I said, it reminds me of um, Independence Day. When yeah. they're reading that, that thing and they see it get big, and then all across the world. And it doesn't all happen at the same time. They'll be like, oh, a ship appeared over L.A. Oh, now there's one over the the, the East Coast. And, oh, they're, they're reporting some dropping in on yep. Africa. Like, it, it doesn't happen all at the same time. They come in waves, and they position themselves across the entire planet. I remember when I was young, there was this mockumentary on television, like on Channel 5 or Channel 4 or some shit. And it was about this approaching... UFO essentially we thought it was a meteor but then they realize I don't know if they realize right off the rip but anyway the governments of the world come together and they destroy this thing whatever's heading toward the earth and I remember like because it was it was made like a full-on news documentary I was I was young probably maybe seven or eight and it blows up and everybody is cheering like at the Department of Defense head headquarters and everybody is so excited that we pulled it off. You know, whatever this was co- heading at Earth, we fucking nailed it. <laughs> and then... That was the baby ship? You see him cheering, and this side of the room starts getting quiet. This side of the room starts getting quiet. And they're all just looking at the screen. And as the, as the, docu- the mockumentary goes off air, they're looking, and on their big radar, it's just dot, 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 oh, dot, 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 more and more and more coming. Yeah. Yeah. They just got Hundreds the lead ship. Of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember thinking like, oh my God, that's exactly how it's going to be, isn't it? That's exactly how it's going to be. And, and you know what? It, well, let's just pretend that, not even pretend, but let's just play a game. If there is legitimate life out there that is that is advanced like this, it's only a matter of time. That's it. That's all it is. Because... Look at our fucking look at the planet we live on. If if uh fucking Ethiopia had UFO technology, basically enough resources, tech, weapons, all of it to rule the entire planet or to start even just progressively start invading everybody, what do you think the odds are going to be that they start invading other countries? If they know they have the power to just crush everyone around them, eventually somewhere down the hierarchy of that country, somebody is going to get extra power hungry and they're going to start dominating one piece at a time. Which almost leads credence to this whole theory he has that they think that we might... Be a superior being. Holy shit. That's, that's why they're watching us. That's why they haven't destroyed us yet. That, that would be the only saving grace we if, got. If you can if you can travel fucking a million light years, you sure as hell can wipe us a bunch of hairless Guaranteed. monkeys that learned how to you make fire and use rocks. Unless they off think the face unless they think we're the creator. Exactly. Because it doesn't mean that we are superior on a military scale it just means that we were smart enough to create something where they, like you said they might have a little bit more respect for us like okay yeah, like this is mostly just a bunch of dummies but they actually pulled something off here we need to figure out how they did it they, and he even says like it, it, it was a it, we could be a mistake yeah or they could be they could be our mistake right and they're just trying to figure it out which, I don't know, man. It's so weird. I don't know. I'm really curious to see what you guys think about this. It is a good one. I'm sure some of you have stumbled upon it. Uh, I don't know. Just let us know what you think. I'll post this video of the stream from Live Meteors that you guys can see for yourself right as it ticks into <laughs> it's the weird. 18th 
something enters the atmosphere. It's weird. And nobody wants to talk about it, so here we are. Until next time, check us out at all our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. Come and hang out with us. And until we speak again, stay safe, stay weird, and just look out for one another. There's people out there struggling with shit you can't even comprehend.